Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibes for all year. And this one is called Border Crisis. And uh, this one is recent here. January the 30th, 2022, Russian military prepares to attack Ukraine. And I don't know much about that. So, you know, I ain't going to talk too much. I'm going to go ahead and try to learn some stuff about it here. And I'll give some insight and stuff. So, you know, what's the, watch it all the way through and thing like that. All right. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer. Is Russia preparing to invade Ukraine? Russia seized part of southern Ukraine in 2014 and backed separatists who started a conflict in large areas of the east. Now Russia warns of military measures if the west does not meet its demands and the U.S. is warning of unprecedented sanctions. Ukraine shares borders with both the EU and Russia, but as a former Soviet Republic, it has deep social and cultural ties with Russia, and Russia is widely spoken there. Russia has long resisted Ukraine's move towards European institutions, and it is now demanding it never joins NATO, the Western Alliance. It was when Ukrainians deposed their pro-Russian president that Russia moved in, seizing, then annexing Ukraine's southern Crimean Peninsula. Russian-backed separatists then captured large swathes of Ukraine's two eastern regions, collectively known as the Donbass. Conflict between rebels and Ukraine's military has continued to this day. Although a shaky 2020 ceasefire deal is back in force. But it is the Russian forces operating beyond the Ukrainian border that are of most concern. Western intelligence services say they number up to 100,000. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryakov, who leads talks with the U.S. on 10th January, has warned of a situation similar to the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, when the U.S. and Soviet Union came close to nuclear conflict. Does that sound like history repeating itself? It's close to the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. And I remember that because I, I think I was born soon after that happened or while it was going on. And again, I, I keep thinking of these people, man. All these people there, you know, with the, the pending war coming. I wonder if they're like really uneasy especially since there's a history of that going on and some of them have grandparents who are alive who had experienced it before who is right who is wrong i i don't know you know i don't know much about what's going on in there so i'm not going to sit here and, and 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 comment about it or anything like that but from a human perspective i repeat that from a human perspective Especially those that live close to the border, where the, where the conflict is probably quick to heat up, and apparently some of the Russian forces are in there already. And of course, you know, some of the Ukrainian forces might strike back and go into Russia or some guerrilla warfare or whatever. It seems like nobody's really winning if it's going on this long, huh? Let's keep watching. Western intelligence services, as well as
does Ukraine's think an incursion or invasion could happen sometime in early 2022? CIA Director William Burns suggested President Putin was putting the Russian military, the Russian security services, in a place where they could act in a... Okay, my Russian uh, subscribers on here. Yeah. This is obviously from one side of it, so hit me up in the comment section. Tell me what you believe or know what's going on from your perspective. And, you know, I want to hear all perspectives. I ain't picking sides. So let me put it right down here now. This war. I just don't, I'm not just not into the war thing. I just want to know from both sides. You know what I mean? It's dangerous to listen to one side and go with what one side says. Because, you know, if there's wars, everybody's committing atrocities, right, from either side. Comment down below. Pretty sweepingly, Presidents Biden and Putin have held several video and phone conversations in recent weeks. And another thing, it's really, really messed up to have outsiders deciding your fate and you really don't have a say in it. It's kind of like how uh, back in Grenada we had uh, Russian-backed government and then we had uh, American-backed uh, anti-revolution people. And they're sitting down talking and figuring out what to do with us. And you don't really have a say in it. You're just there waiting for one or the other to do something or somebody to take your side and somebody to be adversary. It's not a cool feeling, you know what I'm saying? But the most significant talks for months take place between high-ranking U.S. and Russian officials in Geneva on 10th January. Then comes the first NATO-Russia Council meeting for three years in Brussels, followed by talks with the European security body, OSCE. Armed Forces Chief Valery Gerasimov denounced reports of an impending invasion as a lie. Satellite photos showing troop buildups in Crimea and not far from eastern Ukraine were alarmist, Moscow said. President Putin then threatened to take adequate military technical response measures and react harshly to unfriendly steps. Those unfriendly steps appear to refer to Ukraine and the West. Russia claimed Ukrainian troops were massing in the East to launch an attack on separatists, though this was ridiculed in Kiev as propaganda nonsense to justify Russian action. If Moscow wanted to act, it could argue it was protecting the 500,000 people in separatist-run areas who have been handed Russian passports. But Russia has also accused NATO countries of pumping Ukraine with weapons and the U.S. of stoking tensions. Big One business, man. Weapons is big business. Any further to the east, which includes Ukraine and Georgia. Is it the countries Russia pumping it, or is it like people who own the arms factories, Europe, making big money? Pulling out its combat units from Poland and the Baltic republics of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and not deploying missiles in countries such as Poland and Romania. Now look at the scenery around all of that stuff, man. Look at that beautiful beach right there. With the waves gently rock coming in. NATO's all the green. Is and we stick military stuff in the middle of it. To tie its hands for the future or persuaded to withdraw from the old eastern bloc, states is likely to fall flat. How beautiful that place is, man. Also seems doomed 
as it would bar European NATO members from delivering U.S. nuclear weapons. President Putin's overall demands have annoyed, not just... I know you're all thinking, ooh, all, all that, you you be watching this and you're know, seeing all the beauty around it. That's what I remember back home during all that stuff going on, sitting in my veranda and just watching the trees and stuff, you know, watching the moon in the sky. I guess it was a, a way of me enjoying the natural stuff just in case, you know. Still try to find the beauty in things. Still finding the beauty in things despite what was going on around me. Even when uh, all the explosions were going on, you know what I mean? I guess it was like a peace of mind type of thing. Of course, the, <laughs> the boboli helped a lot too. <laughs> the more recent Eastern European NATO members, but also the Nordic states of Sweden and Finland. They are not part of the alliance, but have strengthened ties. While Russia is adamant, it will not allow Ukraine to join NATO. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is looking for a clear timeline from the alliance. Looks all the, all the green and all the stuff is gone. all gone or maybe that's just a nah that's not a region like that there's trees and stuff in the background Okay, buddy. This is some overkill military showings there. Okay. I mean, I have a rudimentary understanding of what's going on there right now. I think I'm going to have to do some more uh, reading. and watching our videos and stuff like that to quite understand what the vibe is and thing. Pending war, man. Okay, you guys keep watching the videos. I, I'm speechless. You guys keep watching the videos and thing and leave them a little card just so you could just click on one or click on a playlist and go check out what I have there. And uh, at some point, we're going to have to start loving each other unconditionally, regardless of race or color or nationality or economic status or whatever it is. Because once we start doing that, we'll take care of each other in different ways other than killing each other. You know what I mean? And I know some people have uh, nationalistic ideas and stuff like that. Some people say uh, globalization is wrong and uh, it depends on how you look at it. Globalization as far as humanity is concerned is what I believe in. Not so much what of economic or military or anything. It's how we treat each other. That's what I'm talking about. But, you know... Seems like we're going further and further away from that. Warrior mentality is overtaking the world. I haven't heard anybody talk about, not one politician is talking about peace and love anymore. Not one. Listen, man, y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.